Police are usually not the best people to deal with mental health issues. These police officers probably didn't expect they would get fired over these situations, or else they would have conducted themselves much differently. Well, you can't change the past. Here are the top police officers that got fired after these situations went terribly wrong. Number 5. Police Chief Gets Taught a Lesson The Karuna City Council voted 6-0 to fire Police Chief Nick Chiros after a video was posted online that showed Chiros verbally berating and then arresting Matthew Roche for video recording an allegedly depressed man who climbed a utility tower near the Mitchell Field Park. Chiros, 66 years old, became chief after Kim Williams retired in 2015. He himself originally joined the department in 2005. Roche is a citizen journalist who was responding to a police scanner message that a man was threatening attacking self from the top of a transmission tower. Police were called to help deal with a man threatening to jump from a tower. Roche also went to the scene. He says he was live-streaming the situation to make sure police were following the law. Further explaining his conduct, Roche said, I zoomed in all the way on my camera and I could barely see the guy on the tower, and it was a little speck. It wasn't about catching him, it was about the police response. In the video, you can hear two MSP troopers ask Roche to move further back. He does. Soon after, the police chief, Chiros, tells him to leave the scene. Roche refuses and tells him his right to be there is protected under the First Amendment. Roche said, I was not about to leave, I was there to protect the guy in the tower. Chiros is firm in requesting that Roche leave while the officers on the scene are negotiating with the person in the tower. Chiros continues to threaten arrest in the video. Roche identifies himself as media. It is not known if he had identification on his person to back up that claim, and eventually Roche is then arrested. Roche tells that he spent hours behind bars and is thankful for the support he received. Roche is reportedly receiving $95,000 in a settlement for unlawful arrest. Specifically to film the police, and make sure that his rights weren't being violated. Hey, you, I need you to get out of here. Nope. This crime scene, get out of here. This is a First Amendment protected no, activity. Do not touch you, you me. You I'm arrested. I give a f about your rights right now. Really? I'm not politically correct. Number four, rookie cop gets thrown out. A Georgia sheriff's deputy was fired after she pointed her gun at a handcuffed man's face to force him into a patrol car. The country sheriff said that Nicole Colleen Pitts has been terminated for excessive force during an incident. Pitts had arrested a suspect who was handcuffed behind his back, but the man had refused to get into a patrol car. To make the man comply, Pitts held her service weapon to a man's head under his chin. A deputy who saw it happen reported the incident to a supervisor. After the incident was reported, Pitts was placed on administrative leave without pay and an internal affairs investigation was launched. Soon after the findings of the internal affairs investigation were released, Pitts was terminated from the force. Pitts is at least the third employee of the Clayton County Sheriff's Office to be terminated due to excessive force or misconduct. Soon before this incident, a deputy who was seen punching a man multiple times while trying to arrest him after a traffic stop was fired as well. Police brutality incidents such as this now gain more media attention than ever before and are taken more seriously as a result as well, making sure these police officers are held accountable for their actions. Number 3. Fighting with Teens a police officer in Social Circle, Georgia, was fired after urging a teenager to fight him during a traffic stop, as seen in a dashcam video. Records show that in 2014, the same officer was disciplined for allegedly threatening to blow up a high school. James Sanders was relieved of duty after footage emerged of the traffic stop, as confirmed by the town's police chief. In the video, Sanders, an eight-year veteran of the force, can be heard delivering a profane tirade to a teenager after someone in the young man's vehicle allegedly yelled, F the police! Sanders appears to follow the teenager's vehicle after hearing the derogatory remark as he participated in another traffic stop. Sanders claims that he pulled the teens over for failure to maintain their lane, but video taken from his vehicle shows that it was only after Sanders sped up behind the teen's vehicle that the teen's car touched the white line. Once the teens are out of their vehicle, Sanders can be heard threatening to jail them and search them for marijuana. He says to the teenagers, if you want to F the police, I'm right here and I'm giving you every opportunity to f me up. Come on!" An anonymous caller alerted the town's police chief to Sanders' behavior. This is not the first time Sanders has behaved in a questionable manner. In 2014, he was written up after allegedly threatening to send anthrax to the staff of a local high school, use a taser on a school administrator, and blow up their building. He allegedly made these threats after the Social Circle High School staff expressed dissatisfaction with Sanders' paid security service during a football game. 
Sanders was subsequently transferred to the evening shift to minimize his contact with the school and was prohibited from setting foot on the school's campus unless there was an emergency situation. Well, now there's no problem at all because Sanders will not be rejoining the police department anytime soon. That's why I got pulled over? Yeah, I'll be glad to tell you in just one second. Yes, I'm going to ask you one time. Yes, sir. All right? If you don't, we're going to go another route with it. Who yelled out of your Jeep when you went by us? Hey, look at me when you talk to me, son. Who are you going to yell at? What'd you say? Brandon Hughes. I know who you are. F the police. You're sorry. Get your hands out of your pockets. Why you want to say that to the police? Now, it's a little bit more than being stupid is what I think. I didn't know y'all could be so goddamn stupid anymore. Everybody get out of the Jeep. Number two, police brutality gets avenged. South Carolina police officer David Lance Dukes was fired and facing criminal charges after he stomped on the head of a physically disabled black man. The 38-year-old was charged with first-degree hitting and battery and was booked into the Orangeburg County Detention Center and later released on $10,000 bond. If convicted, Dukes would face 10 years in prison. Body-worn cameras recorded the violent incident as Dukes and other officers went to the Colleton Village townhomes to investigate a 911 call about a man with a gun. A female resident had called to report a man identified as Clarence Galeyard of Orangeburg banging on her door and window trying to get in. The report states that the caller said Galeyard had a gun in the waistband of his jean shorts, although later on she said she never saw a gun. When officers arrived, they found Galeyard in the parking lot holding a stick wrapped in shiny silver tape. Galeyard's lawyer later explained that his client walks with the stick as protection from aggressive stray dogs as well as a walking aid. The cop used excessive force on the 58-year-old man, stomping him on his head. David Lance Dukes ordered Galeyard to lie flat on his stomach after approaching him. Galeyard could not lie flat because he has rods and pins in his leg from an earlier accident. Dukes then raised his foot and repeatedly smashed the older man's head and neck into the pavement. The dash cam footage is difficult to watch and absolutely heart-wrenching. Footage from bystanders and body cam from another officer captured the ordeal and also proved Dukes lied to superiors about the interaction. Dukes was fired within two days of the incident and charged with first-degree hitting and battery. Clarence Galeyard will receive $650,000, an apology from Orangeburg politicians. Number 1. Gross Misconduct Two female Georgia police officers were fired after an investigation into body cam footage showed them using a coin toss app to determine the arrest of a woman during a traffic stop. In their termination letter, the police chief stated that the officers had, quote, engaged in conduct on or off duty which adversely affects the efficiency of the department and has a tendency to destroy public respect for the employee or the department. The victim, Sarah Webb, said she was driving fast because she was late for her job at a hair salon and was arrested on charges of speeding, reckless driving, and driving too fast for conditions, according to the police record. In the video, Brown and Wilson are heard discussing what they should do with Webb, and then Brown says that she doesn't have speed detection equipment, and Wilson says she doesn't have any tickets. The officers use the terms A for arrest for heads and R for release for tails, according to the station. Webb said she didn't know the officers used the coin toss app before arresting her until she was contacted a few weeks before her court date. Later on, she said, It's disgusting. It's scary to think police officers do stuff like this. Nevertheless, these two must have never expected a coin toss would get them fired. Serves them right for treating a person's freedom and life like a game. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.